Yeah, I do want to get into how age rest- restricting actually affects like your production of content. And and obviously, I think you'd probably deal with it more than a lot of other yeah, uh, gun related YouTubers because of the, the nature of the videos you're doing, which are, you know, kind of overviews of violent events mm-hmm. uh, so that people can learn from them for self-defense purposes. But, um, you know, go- going back to this high capacity magazine thing for a moment, it reminds me a lot of the silencer suppressor uh, screw up in moderation that happened uh, a while back with YouTube uh, where they themselves came out and said that they had messed this up, but uh, it's sort of indicative of the, some of these, the issues with uh, how this stuff actually gets enforced in practice. Cause what is, what is a high capacity magazine, right? They don't tell you um, how in the world is an, like a robot that scans your video going to tell the magazine is high capacity or not. And then, same question for the people, the actual humans at the second level of moderation, you know, after an appeal or something, how are they going to make that determination? Because that was, that uh, it seemed was the big problem with the suppressor issue they had a while back where they were just striking and banning all sorts of videos that had suppressors in them, like being screwed on or there was yep. some, it wasn't really clear what the issue was, but it had something to do with suppressors. And um, and YouTube said that they had sort of made a mistake in how they were enforcing that rule. I mean, I, what's your expectation or concern for how they're going to well, enforce this rule? I mean, a I I don't I don't expect or believe that YouTube has anybody in their policy wing and anybody in their enforcement wing who understands a thing about firearms. Okay, or if they do, they're at a very low level and don't have significant influence. Uh, I will say, at Facebook for a while, we had a real gun guy at a kind of a C-suite level for a few years there. And that was very helpful. That got us, you know, some understanding, like, you know, a guy that had lunch with Zuckerberg on the reg. Um, and unfortunately he retires. <laughs> and, and so then that, you know, we didn't have that. I don't expect that with YouTube at all. And so, you know, when you've got policies that are made by people who, who aren't cognizant and conversant in the issues, you're going to make mistakes. And then, when those policies are not communicated well to, and, and they, they're completely opaque on enforcement. Who is doing the enforcement's bots for sure. It's a, you know, that's an algorithm generated AI level of, of first enforcement. Then if you appeal it, who's seeing that appeal? Is that appeal being done by contract labor in Malaysia? Um, and not that Malaysian people can't be really good at things. I'm not saying that at all. Do they understand this particular issue? Uh, you know, I, and again, I don't know who it is. Is it some, guy who lives in Mountain View, California, who has never handled a gun in his life and doesn't understand what the issues are and doesn't understand what the enforcement standard is. And then you can't appeal it further than that. Uh, it's just, you know, I we recently, in fact, just the other day, a Tuesday, I caught a strike on my big channel, which is, was really frustrating because it wasn't earned. And I appealed it. Uh, it was on a short video and got a response back in about six hours that said, no, nope, sorry, we denied your appeal. We know this is frustrating, but Sorry. And that's it. I have no further avenue of discussion. Like, can you tell me why? What can I do to avoid this in the future? Well, read the policy. I've read the policy. It's not very, it's not helpful in this issue. I need to know where my right. violation was so that I can do better. Uh, and, right. And, and that's, that's kind of okay. the issue across platforms at this mm-hmm. point, right? I mean, this is, and they do this intentionally. And as they've explained, I think every major social platform has explained this at one point or another. They, they keep the rules somewhat intentionally vague because they don't want people to be able to uh, get around them or, or, you know, go through loopholes or whatever, so that they give themselves a lot of discretion in how they enforce these things. Um, and you kind of just have to live with that as a creator. But I mean, it seems um, sort of the sort of Damocles situation with that, right? Oh, uh, constantly. I mean, you are living under the sort of Damocles because I mean, I have a catalog on my big channel of over 4,000 videos. I mean, 4,500 videos at this point, and they are all reviewable at any given moment. And so at a moment's notice, they could go strike one, strike two, strike three, you're out. And, uh, and, and I have just no delete your channel, right? Yeah. just delete it. Um, yeah. that's the big reason that we started our own family of apps because I, mm-hmm. you know, living on rented land with the sort of Damocles hanging over you is, is, uh, I mean, if it's just me and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm feeding my family here, but I could go get a, another job if I needed to. But I got 12 employees, you know, and all those people feed their families based on the revenue that we generate doing this. And so 
I have to think about them too, you know? And, and, uh, so it, it, it's not an easy thing. I think people think of uh, their average content creator on YouTube as um, some, you know, fit girl who, you know, takes a selfie and then Instagram pays her a million dollars or something. You know, you're an influencer or whatever. For most of us, this is a business and we run it like a business. And it's like any other small business in America. I create a product. I get paid for that product. People consume that product. I get paid for it. I have employees who do parts of the business for me. Um, and it's, it's a small business like any other. So it's a, it's a, it's an interesting small business. And is it going to be a problem moving forward? I mean, it's, it's been a problem. I've been, uh, posting videos to YouTube daily since April of 2016. So, you know, eight years, eight and a half years, uh, or eight, eight and a little bit now of, of doing that. Um, and it's just after a while you get used to the way of doing business. And when they make a tweak, you look at the tweak and you go, all right, moving forward, let's do this. Uh, I'm not going to go back and remove any videos because I'm not worried about anything. I will say uh, when they started, uh, when the bump stock, you know, that was a government action. When, when the ATF said bump stocks are now considered short barrel rifles um, or not bump stocks, rather, I'm sorry, uh, pistol braces became pistol braces. Uh, yeah. When pistol braces were declared to be short barrel rifles, I went and took all, every video off of active self-protection extra with a pistol brace on it mm. because I'm like, well, wait a minute. They were, I, I could certainly say they were legal then and it was considered a pistol then, but are the bots going to understand that? Is the ATF going to understand that? That is a whole nother issue. So I just took them all down and there weren't a ton of them anyway. So, 